All right, two more elements to our learning strategies. We're going to go over cognitive load and chunking. Okay, starting with cognitive load. Very simple idea. It's just that we can only hold a certain number of things in our mind at one time when we're learning. All right, so if we're learning new things, we have to limit the number of things we're learning. Cognitive load is synonymous with mental bandwidth or working memory, which would be opposed to our long-term memory, which would be the goal of using our working memory to consolidate information and then eventually have that put into our long-term memory, freeing up space in our short-term memory, all right? So most modern research shows that we can confidently hold four different things in our mind at once. So if we're working through a sequence, it's a really safe bet that if you get four details, you can work through those four details at once. All right. If you learn a few new concepts, you should be able to hold a, a few of those concepts, three or four or five, in your mind at one time. All right. So recognizing that it's going to be most efficient to break things down to approximately four all right, ideas at once, learn those ideas, consolidate them into one chunk, which is what we're going to get to in a second, all right, and then start learning more information. So if we're learning a sequence, I want to learn maybe four to seven elements of that sequence, and then that's going to eventually be consolidated into its own element of short-term memory, freeing up more short-term memory to then continue learning, all right? Now, just addressing this number four, all right, um, only maybe 20 years ago or so, that number was closer to seven, all right? So it was the mean between five and nine for numbers, uh, a number of things that we can hold in our working memory. Uh, this is a little bit controversial and it really depends on the individual. Uh, your intelligence level is a huge factor. The more intelligent someone is, the more ideas they're able to hold in their mind at one time. And there are insane outliers who can hold a ridiculous amount of information in their mind at once. But four is the go-to number right now, the most conservative number. Uh, if you want to make sure that you or maybe your teacher, um, your students are learning in the most effective way possible, four is an absolute surefire bet. You can hold four things in your mind at once when you're learning or trying to remember um, four different things. Okay, that moves into chunking, which is extremely related to this idea of cognitive load. Chunking is quite simple as well. Imagine you have a massive sequence. I want to start in the standing position. I want to hand fight, take my opponent down, you know, pass their guard, take their back, get the rear naked choke. That is a huge sequence. So a chunk is breaking down a massive sequence into little manageable steps. All right, those manageable steps should be uh, should include approximately four to seven elements. All right. So I'll work on a hand fighting sequence. I'll work on my like snap down from a standing position. All right, approximately four things. Once I consolidate that chunk, then I can move on to the next chunk and the next chunk and the next chunk, eventually building you know, a massive sequence of taking someone's back and getting that rear naked choke. All right, so this is just cognitive load, mental bandwidth, uh, working memory, as opposed to long-term memory, and the idea of chunking, all right? Breaking down big projects into smaller chunks. We consolidate those chunks, so I learn one chunk, all right, it becomes an element of my short-term memory, and then that frees up the rest of my short-term memory uh, to start working on another chunk. So then by the end of one training session, I've used my short-term memory efficiently to then log this into my longer-term memory. Uh, and we're gonna go over some more learning strategies that, we're gonna, that are gonna complement these ideas as well.